Today I'm going to be cleaning out my main desktop PC and I'm going to run some before and after tests to see if cleaning it actually helps improve performance and temperatures. I do have two cats that like to lay on the PC pretty much all the time, so that's obviously going to add quite a bit of dust, dander, and even fur to the equation. It's been about six months since I've last taken off this side panel, that was the last time I cleaned it, and already you can sort of see quite a bit of buildup on the GPU, it's not looking too good. That's all your fault. Let's go ahead and crack it open though. See what the damage is. Oh my God. Hold on, Ryo need to get paid. This video is sponsored by the Drop CSTM80 mechanical keyboard. It has a many different cover with magnet. You can change very easy. This is a good idea, I'm pretty sure. China going to steal. You can choose the weight and the switch spray. This very custom. Make the typing feel like happy ending. It has an ABS keycap with a front facing alphabet and some RGB. The design is simple and quiet, not noisy like American woman. The inner case is a polycarbonate material, very strong. If it break, that's your fault. There's a custom gasket mounted system with a gasket peg you can replace when changing the plate. It's going to change the keyboard feel and give you big egg roll. Also, there's a hot swap PCB, pre installed foam, polycarbonate plate, and aluminum case weight. This is a keyboard for the smart, good looking people. So click the description link if you're not dumb and ugly. Now before we get into it, I want to quickly address those of you who might have seen the video I posted a while back where I actually built my cats a dedicated PC so that they could lay on top of that one instead of my main system. And for a while they were actually using it. It was specifically during the winter time when it was a lot colder in here and they were just freezing their asses off. So I was actually running a folding at home 24 seven and, and they were using it pretty regularly. But that was really just for the winter season. The rest of the year, especially summer when electricity prices in California are skyrocketed, you know, just crazy premium. I don't like to run this 24 seven under load. It gets pretty expensive, which is why for the majority of the time, the cats have been terrorizing my main desktop. All right, I have moved the system to my dining room temporarily because there's just a bit more space to work with here. At first glance, the system doesn't look too bad on the outside. We've got a little bit of loose, loose fur and some dust and stuff like that. Pretty typical until we get to the back area. Quite a bit of buildup right there underneath the expansion slots. Let's take a look at the PSU dust filter. Oh, that's not bad at all. That's actually much better than I was expecting. Let's pop off the front panel. Okay, there we go. Three little fur balls right where the fans are. That's a lot of hair. So that's obviously gonna impede some airflow to a degree. At the very least, the dust filter is doing its job, so that's good. Fan blades, not too bad, actually. The radiator fans, we're gonna have to take off the side panel to really get a closer look. This is the main event right here. Put this down. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. This is, this is a lot. This is a lot. Let's start at the bottom. So this is where everything falls eventually. If it doesn't get caught by anything else above it, it looks like I've got a rug in my PC, man. This isn't good. This case uses a tinted glass panel, so I don't really see a whole lot through it, but oh my goodness. And this is in six months. This is roughly six months. I don't know the exact uh, timeline of when I last cleaned it, but roughly six to eight months ago. And in that time, it's just, it's become a complete catastrophe. Oh God, the radiator for the AIO actually doesn't look as bad as I was expecting it to. Kind of hard to get in there, but it doesn't look like there's a ton of buildup. It looks worse on the outside. There's just a bunch of stuff here. And then up here, oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. It looks like a haunted house. That is insane. I don't know how much that's going to affect temperatures. Actually, it is. Maybe not directly, but I mean, this is just a bunch of extra crap and dust and debris in your PC that's getting circulated bit by bit and is going to eventually land on things like heat sinks and fans. Like, this is our GPU. Uh, 40, poor 4090. This is poor 4090, bro. And the fan. The fan's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. Let me get my, my flashlight out here. The heat sink beneath the fan on our 4090 doesn't look as bad. It doesn't mean it's not bad. I just, from this angle, from where I'm standing, it doesn't look terrible. But uh, this is one of the reasons why components get hot when they're dirty. Dust will land on the aluminum fins of the heat sink. I mean, the heat sink is supposed to absorb heat and then the fans dissipate that heat by blowing it away. But if there's dust coating the aluminum fins, it's essentially trapping the heat. It's an insulator and that is obviously going to potentially affect your thermals in a not so good way. I will say, I wonder if this fan is deflecting any of the hair or dust away from the GPU because it is blowing uh, upwards. I wonder if that helps any. I can't say for sure. I will say that it's probably helpful that we have a fairly enclosed GPU with the 4090 FE. If we were dealing with like a semi-open shroud, potentially one that was even vertically mounted. Imagine if it was a semi-open shroud vertically mounted where the heatsink was just completely exposed from the top. I think we'd be in a lot worse situation than we are here, but it's still not looking good, guys. Let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah, these top fans, you can see a bunch of buildup right there on the inside, that upper side of the blade. And then the VRM, oh my God, our poor VRM heat sinks. The pump block on our AIO looks like a freaking peach, dude. It's growing hair, it's got its own ecosystem. The tubing is looking real.
real rough too, god, jeez. Obviously it's a it's sort of a more fabric material, so stuff sticks to it a lot easier. Not good, not good, and look at that corner. That corner is rough. That is pretty rough. Oh my. Dare I take a peek from the top angle? Okay, this dust filter doesn't look too bad. Oh, she! Woo, 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 woo. Okay. All right. Top view of the VRM. Oh my god. You see that? Those are capacitors. Or what used to be capacitors. Now they look like Sour Patch Kids. What the hell, dude? This is crazy. On the, uh, those are the dim slots right there. Over here, you can almost see the top of that 8-pin EPS connector. That is wild. Okay. Um, let me turn the system around. Who knows what we'll find here. All right, the back's not looking quite as bad and that's to be expected because there's just not as many openings up top for things to fall through. You got those two cutouts up there. On the bottom though, you see a lot of that junk that fell through the PSU shroud kind of building up over time. Eesh. I've already run the benchmarks with the system in its current state. So now I'm gonna go ahead and clean it, rerun those tests, and we'll see if that makes a difference. It should. Bum, ba, da, bum, ba, 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 ba. The PC is clean, the PC is clean, the PC is clean. Woo. Spent about 20 minutes on it. That's all it took. The data vac is a godsend. If you guys don't have, I'll link this in the description. If you're a PC user, this is a must have. There's no better way to clean your PC, IMO. I cleaned it about as well as I could without installing any of the parts. Obviously, if you want to get it to day one, looking like day one, like you just built it, then you'd have to uninstall everything, in my opinion, and clean everything individually. But that's just a lot more time. Like I said, I did this in about 20 minutes and I got about 90% the way there. It is looking spick and span, if I do say so myself. Yeah, baby. After I used the data vac, I just rubbed everything down with a microfiber cloth and some rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is much preferred over water because it's not nearly as conductive and it also dries super fast, so it's a lot safer. And for all the little nooks and crannies in the corners and crevices that you can't really get to with your hands, a Q-tip works great, especially if you've got a flashlight. There's very few areas you can't attack with a flashlight and Q-tip. And then I was even able to get a lot of the VRM, more than I thought I would because of these cutouts here. The cable cutouts at the top allowed me to stick a finger in there and just kind of wipe things down. And now you can actually see a VRM. Look at that. It's more than just more than just a rug. See that shiny capacitor peeking through? What a beauty. And just a quick disclaimer, uh, this isn't a cleaning tutorial or anything, and this probably goes without saying, but if you are gonna be using a data vac or something similar to dust your PC, do it outdoors. Indoors is, is a nightmare. Even if it's well ventilated, you're gonna give yourself or somebody in your house an allergy attack, and it's just gonna trash the place. So just do that outdoors. Just wanna make that clear. But uh, yeah, it's, it's clean. I will also say that cleaning your PC, every time I clean it, it reminds me that it's top three most satisfying things a PC owner can do. I would say apart from uh, first boot after you build a system and maybe uh, doing some really fine cable management, cleaning your PC and, and getting it to look this good again is, uh, is, is definitely high up there. Super satisfying. So we are now ready for clean benchmarks. We're gonna run all the same tests that I did on the dirty PC now that we have a clean system and we're gonna compare the results, see what we get. All right, the results are in. You are not the father, no. Uh, I, I got a bunch of different results here, our before and after testing for the clean, for dirty PC versus clean PC. Right out of the gate, guys, there's not a whole lot to get excited about here. The results are very similar between the dirty and the clean systems, with a few minor exceptions, but we'll go through them one by one. Starting with the Cinebench R23 multi-threaded test, the NT all-core test, uh, with the dirty PC scoring 19,280 versus 19,693 on the clean PC, that's 2% uplift in performance. The, that's a point for the clean PC. This is repeatable. I did do three tests for each system and I took the average of those three tests. So it is measurable. It's small, but it's it's there. 2%. Yay, clean PC. I also ran Cinebench R23 just, just to run it. I, I ran it for five minutes straight to gauge the average temperatures and clock speeds that we were seeing on both systems. Exactly the same. Unsurprisingly, 95C on the 7700X, which is known to target 95C when it's under full load, so nothing too surprising there. And then 4,988 megahertz was the average clock speed on both systems, once again, exactly the same. The next test I ran was Adobe Premiere Pro. Once again, this is a, I guess this is sort of a CPU and GPU test because I was using hardware encoding as well to export a 4K file, and exactly the same time was required for both systems 
to render that file. Three minutes and 53 seconds is how long the export took. However, there was a slight difference in temperature, one degree warmer on the clean PC. The clean PC was actually one degree warmer and it's been the exact same temperature in my house. One degree warmer, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why that is. I feel like if you remove a dust blanket off of a computer, it should run cooler, but what do I know? And then finally, Combustor, really just the only test here to, to, to gauge our GPU performance uh, with a score on the dirty PC of 6,948. That was, uh, that equated to 115 FPS versus a score of 6787 or 113 FPS on the clean PC. So we actually lost two frames per second on the clean PC. Once again, I don't think that was dust that we that we just removed. That was magic because the, the dirty PC is, is outperforming the clean PC. It's ever so slight, but I did, once again, just like Cinebench, I ran this test multiple times. It was 115 FPS to 113. Temperature was more or less the same when you factor in margin of error. It was 84.9 to 84.6 on the clean PC. Uh, so more or less the same there. To be honest, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't see more improvement on the clean PC. I think that just would have been more exciting to be like, yeah, look at, you can see the numbers go up and stuff. So even though these aren't the most exciting results, there's some, there's some takeaways here. Uh, for one, just because you clean your PC, even if it's filthy, doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's gonna perform better. I've seen many cases, you can go look them up right now. There's plenty of people online who have shared the results after cleaning a filthy PC and shown, look, my CPU, GPU temps dropped four, five, six, seven degrees. It even bumped the frame rate up a little bit. Perfectly cool, I'm happy for those people, but it doesn't guarantee that just because you have a filthy PC that you clean it uh, and you clean it, it doesn't, it's not just gonna magically run faster or better. I think there's a number of reasons for that. I think for one, how dirty it is, that's pretty obvious. My, my PC was fairly filthy, but that also leads into the second factor, which is what parts of the PC are affected. I had a lot of dust buildup and hair buildup on, on like the surfaces of things, like on, on the, uh, the shroud of the GPU or the PSU shroud. A lot of buildup on the motherboard VRM heatsink as well, but we didn't test that. Uh, but I did not see a whole lot of buildup in the radiator fins, like the, the radiator fin array or even the heatsink of our GPU. I think it would have been a very different story if my AIO radiator was mounted to the top of the case, because then it would be directly underneath where the cats lay down and just all that crap would have fallen in there. That would have been interesting to test. Overall, you know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed that we didn't see more exciting results with the clean version of the PC. But I think it also speaks volumes to just the sheer resilience of PC hardware. It makes me admire them, kind of reminds me how, how resilient they are, uh, not just to breaking and bending and snapping and things like that, but but uh, but to dust, to dust and dander, and, and also just how far we've come with like case design. I think, you know, shout out to that Corsair case, the, uh, I think it's a 4000D, I think, 4000D. Um, and just how, how far we've come with dust filtration. I mean, now with the mid-range case, you see you get dust filters on nearly every side of the PC, on the front, the bottom, uh, and the top, sometimes more than that. At the very least, I could say I had some fun with this at-home testing, and I now have a squeaky clean PC to look at, which is always nice. Now I just need to find a way to keep these little guys off the system without it overheating so that I don't have to keep cleaning it every other month. Uh, I'm sure I'll figure something out. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. What do you guys do to, to keep your cats or whatever pets off of your PC? I honestly don't know what I could do because you know you, you don't want to suffocate the fans or anything. You want to leave a little bit, I don't know, maybe I should build something out of Lego. I don't know. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. This was fun. If you enjoy these little home tech blogs, I know they're like not super well, like they're not polished or anything. It's just kind of random. But let me know. Uh, let me know what else you'd like to see on the channel moving forward. I've got some ideas already in the chamber, but feel free to share your thoughts on what you'd like to see moving forward. Thank you guys so much for watching again. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed. Click the notification bell, please. The notification bell is the only thing letting you know that I've uploaded a video because YouTube hates me now, understandably. But uh, thank you guys so much again for watching. I will see you very soon in the next video. Have a good one. Goodbye.